Welcome back to Newsmax Now. Newsmax has released an exclusive new poll. That poll shows Donald Trump taking a commanding lead among fellow GOP contenders. The poll also shows Dr. Ben Carson surging in popularity. And joining me right now to talk more about this poll is Matt Towery, nationally syndicated columnist and founder of Insider Advantage in Opinion Savvy. Matt, as always, great to talk to you. Great to be with you. Well, you said this about Donald Trump. This is not a pretend candidacy. This is not something to be mocked. This guy is for real. I've not seen anyone have this sort of effect, to be quite blunt, since Ronald Reagan. And I'm sure Donald Trump likes that. But why is he having such a strong impact with GOP voters? Well, I, I think, and this is not empirical from the poll, but I think what you're saying, and I was around when Reagan ran in 1980. I was a lowly aide in the U.S. Senate race, but we won it. And I, was, I, I can tell you, what Trump is doing is he's saying what's on his mind, and he's not appearing to be walking on eggshells. And I think Republicans, there's certainly a percentage of Republicans, who have been tiring of the professional political type approach to this, where everyone parses every single word. When Trump gets hit with something he said bad or something he did bad in the past, he says, ah, oh, it's just old news, and he moves on. Well, they sort of like that because they feel like, I think that's what they feel they need in order to be able to take on the Democrats. And, and this is not the first time I'm hearing this, but how soon do you think before we see some of the other candidates perhaps trying to adapt the same type of strategy? Well, I don't you, as a former politician, once you're a politician, it's hard to break that habit of being more careful. I think the first you'll see will probably be Chris Christie because he'll want to be Chris Christie. A few of the others will try to be pretty plain spoken, but it's going to be a little hard to do an imitation of Donald Trump. I don't expect to see many of them quite try to match him. Uh, yeah, he is hard to match, that is for sure. Let's talk a little bit more about Thursday night's debate. The cuts have been made. Now that we know who is in and who is out, what was the biggest surprise to you about the selection process? Well, I think some of the candidates who just fell apart in the end, I mean, everyone's talking about Rick Perry not making it. Uh, but if you look at Texas, which we polled for Fox, uh, their Fox affiliates there, and it's being released later today, you'll see that Rick Perry is not doing well at all in his home state. And I asked people in Texas why that was the case. And apparently in Texas, there is a view that Perry's candidacy is not as, as serious as it was four years ago. But the national media lotomized that. So if he's not doing well in Texas, he's not going to do well in the polls around the rest of the country. That's a big chunk of that poll. So Perry didn't make it. That was a little surprising. Rick Santorum is scratching at zero in just about everything. That's a little surprising. Mm -hmm. So I think the story would be that a lot of the candidates who have, who have run before aren't making the cut, or at least some of them. And then some who are making it, like Dr. Ben Carson. He's doing extremely well in this poll that we did of, of the southern states. So uh, I, I was surprised both ways. And, you know, I never have a crystal ball. I can't, can't predict what next month is going to show. But I, I'm certainly surprised. If you'd asked me two months ago, would this be the makeup of the debate, I probably would have said no way. <laughs> well, when we look at the, the, the makeup of the candidates that are going to be on the stage, and we think back to the last time around in 2012, we know Tim Pawlenty had a pretty disastrous debate, uh, and then shortly thereafter that, he left the campaign. Uh, who do you see being this election cycle's Tim Pawlenty, who's going to be on the stage, but maybe uh, flubs up there in the debate, and then the campaign just goes straight down from there? Well, I don't know if he will be or won't be, but... Ben Carson is going to be debating people who have been in politics or around it much longer. Now, Trump's not held office, but he's a pro at this. He goes back to the Reagan era as well. So I'm going to watch Ben Carson to see if he can hold his own with these other candidates. Um, I'm also going to be watching just, just to see if Marco Rubio is flustered by the fact that he's not doing as well as he expected. And if he decides to make some grand Hail Mary that doesn't necessarily... Uh, make it across to the voters. So those are two I'm going to be watching very carefully to see if they can handle the pressure of, this, of the polling circumstances that they're in right now. Yeah, there is a lot at stake. And things, uh, well, you know a lot about the South. How is Marco Rubio looking, not just in Florida, but around the South? Is he struggling as badly as you indicate there? Yeah, he's struggling right now. And it, part of the problem is in his home state of Florida, he's not doing very well at all. It's basically Bush and Trump who, who have most of the votes there. And the other thing that we're seeing in the breakdown of all these southern states, admittedly, Hispanic, Latino is not a large percentage of the vote in some southern states. But when you get to some of the states like Texas, Florida, Georgia, other states, you have a higher percentage. And oddly enough, Trump is either leading in Hispanic, Latino, or he's splitting it with Bush. And Rubio, who one would think would have that vote, is barely scratched.
All right, Matt, last question for you. A little less than a minute left to go. What do we hear more about in the debate tomorrow night, foreign policy or immigration? Well, I think at the end you're going to hear more about foreign policy, but immigration is, is going to take front and center at some point because Donald Trump has opened it up, and clearly it is something that is helping him, not hurting him. Right, right. I also, also think you'll hear the economy more than people expect. All right, we'll look forward to that. Matt Towery, thanks so much for being with us. Matt Towery, nationally syndicated columnist and founder of Insider Advantage and Opinion Savvy. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. All right, to see more of our exclusive poll, just head over to Newsmax.com. Coming up... How would you react if your child came home from school telling you that he or she had been handcuffed by a school resource officer? And what were your legal rights? We'll talk about that in our roundtable. Plus, stay tuned. We'll have more on why there won't be any women on the GOP stage, but the candidates may be smart enough to pitch an idea that will resonate with female voters and bring them into the GOP tent. All that's coming up right after this.